thank you very much indeed for being here. I appreciate uh, you coming to, to experience the House of Rob and to, to hear what we've got to say this, this afternoon. Um, we're going to have a very interesting conversation, I'm, I'm very sure, uh, now about luxury travel or just travel in general. And who isn't interested in tra travel? Who doesn't love the idea of exploring, uh, discovering new things and getting on out there and uh, seeing the world? So, uh, so let's get at it. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having us, Paul. Thank you Thank for being you. here. Um, what do you think brands and, and hospitality uh, companies and hotels, what have they seen that is what people want? Because it's not just, I want to go and you know, work out and do whatever. What are the best ones offering beyond just the kind of opportunity to relax and, and discover things? Yeah. Um, well, the hotel brands are really having to up their game constantly in terms of what they're offering um, in wellness. But, you know, a lot of people are looking for, so a lot of the hotels are, uh, you know, bringing big wellness names in and then having a curated, like a calendar of events throughout the year. So that's bringing people in because of their, you know, big following. But people are really looking for um, programs that are really tailored to what their um, individual health goals are. Right, so transformational travel is another big one that's happening right now. Um, people are seeking out psychedelic retreats. <laughs> that's not something we get involved in, but um, yeah, I mean, um, peak performance is a big one. So, for instance, um, you know, we've been sending a lot of guests to New Zealand, working with a company called New Zeal. And we've got a mountaineer who's turned motivational speaker, and he knows every crevice of New Zealand and takes people by helicopter to places, parts of New Zealand that you could never get to on your own, and then for that sounds them. cheating. If you're a mountaineer, you're supposed to walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> right. <laughs> but he's forcing people to get out of their comfort zone. So it's these sort of, these like next level experiences, but really tailored to people's individual health goals. Um, so with our clientele, often they want private places. So um, in, in a lot of cases, we're, we're, in, we're doing private islands where... People just want to go with their friends, right. you know, have us curate the wellness gurus and then, yeah, do it in private, on a private island. So you, you're able to find a private island, which is exclusively for their use, bring in gurus and, and fitness experts and almost make a bespoke wellness retreat for them on an island? Yeah. In fact, one, of, one island is off the coast of Spain that we've been working with um, frequently. The public does not have access to it. Um, we know the owner. There's one gorgeous villa on it with five luxurious suites. It's really fantastic. It's got some of the most epic kite surfing in the world in that area. If you want to kite surf, the world champion kite surfer, you can do that. Um, the Galician coast, as you know, is a center of gastronomy. gastronomy. Mm. But yeah, we've got a lot of people who say, I want to take a group of my friends. Sometimes they have their own wellness gurus they want to bring with them. Right. And sometimes they're asking us to curate it for them. But that's a totally private experience that can, you can only find through us, basically. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Should we all do that next year rather than come here? That sounds pretty cool. Um, one of the things that I've, I've seen writing about travel and, and luxury travel over far too long, is the kind of desire for, for people to almost earn their luxury. So the thing where you, you do something during the day which makes you feel that you're entitled to the wonders during the evening. So maybe it's marathon training and you go out and you beast yourself and then you're, you know, you're staying at an extraordinary hotel with fantastic food and you've kind of earned that, that moment of relaxation and celebration. Is that something that you get involved in? Is that something you've seen? Yeah, well, <laughs> a big part of what we do is sort of adding that level of magic, right? So um, oftentimes we'll add that piece of it that guests have not necessarily asked for, right? But yes, the, um, the let's really tax ourselves and then have the reward afterward, sure. I mean, people still want the high-end luxury. They want to be pampered. You know, they want to pair that with the let's get our asses kicked <laughs> sort of situation. <laughs> Aren't people weird? <laughs> <laughs> Why not just go and have the lovely, lovely yeah. <laughs> the time all the time anyway? But, right. um, I'm sure the question that everybody asks is that when they discover that you're kind of the queens of luxury travel is, oh, cool, where should we go? So where should we go? Like, wh what are you seeing as the kind of destinations for 24 that people are excited about and, and that you guys are excited about sending people to? Yeah, that's a great question. I think one of the most important things when asked that is to really get to know the guest because that's going to be different for everybody. 
Every destination is different for the individual and depending on what you want to do and what you want to accomplish on your holidays is how we select it. But some of the top trends that we're seeing with some of our guests are Africa. Um, Africa is a big one for us and we're seeing a shift that it's not a bucket list destination anymore. A lot of our guests that go to Africa then want to come back and come back and bring their families or come back and bring friends. We're seeing a lot of young families go to Africa to experience that time together. Whereabouts in Africa? Sorry to uh, our top one is Botswana. And um, Botswana is a magical destination because you can do a lot of different things. You can focus on conservation. You can do the land aspect of the safari. You can do the water aspect of the safari. You can get involved in the communities there. And one of the things we just did for a young family just last week, actually, is we had their planned itinerary. And as Susan alluded to, we like to sprinkle a little bit of magic in everything that we do. And halfway through their trip, we got them together, we got them in a Jeep, and we took them to a destination. Then there was a private helicopter that took them to a place that no one had been to, and we had set up a five-star camp just for their family. And they were able to stay there for two nights on their own with executive chefs, with VIP everything, and it was very, very special. So that's just a sample of how doing something like that with us is a little bit different, because we can it. sprinkle that magic. I like that. You stay there on your own with an enormous army of chefs and <laughs> <laughs> really out there roughing it. Yeah, and yeah. Yes. good for you. They're Excellent. very good at staying incognito, so I'm, it's okay. I'm sure they are. They're just hiding behind a tree <laughs> doing the cooking. Um, so where else? Where, I mean, anywhere yeah. else in Africa that you would recommend that's kind of cool at yeah, the moment? Yeah, well, South Africa's great. That's great for young families as well and offers a, offers a lot of diversity. You can obviously do Cape Town with a lot of different experiences there. Then you can go to the Winelands if you choose to do that and then obviously do the Genuine Safari and there's also the beach component. So that's a good one for families and kind of taps into a lot of different things that people like to do. And then we're also seeing a real uptick taking away from Africa going to um, cruises, expedition cruises. So Antarctica at the moment is super hot. I think a lot of it unfortunately has to do with climate change but it's also great to see that guests and travelers are aware of what's actually happening in our world and they want to get there and either help out or be able to be a part of it before um, it changes too much. So Antarctica is great um, and that's also nice for families or for solo travelers or for couples and then also river cruises have taken a big, big turn. So like we have great river cruises in the Amazon, we've got great river cruises through France, lots of different destinations where then we take on extra special experiences that wherever the river cruise stops, we come and pick you up and again, sprinkle a little bit of magic. So let's just... I want to kind of explore that a little bit because um, when when most people think of cruises, they think of big old ships, and, and you know it's not not necessarily in the in the luxury kind of world. Um, but river cruises are a really interesting variation on that because it's always a, a smaller ship, um, and it's a very very different experience. And we've both been on something called uh, a ship called or a company called Aqua Expeditions, which, as you say, was up the Amazon, and that remains for me one of the, the most extraordinary experiences I've ever done. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about what, what you mean by a river cruise and sure. where particularly you think is, is worth it? Yeah, looking for? sure, that's a great question. So the one um, that, you're, that you're referencing in the Amazon, these boats are all custom built and all very small. So as Paul alluded to, there's like, we have little cabins. Um, a lot of guests will like hire it out exclusively just for their family or for friends. If they don't have it exclusively, there's only a few other guests. And then basically it gives you, they have um, culinary experts on board so you can still do like the cooking experiences and get all the different cuisine of the area. When we take you off the boat at the different destinations, you can go to the farms to pick all the fresh herbs for what's gonna make your dinner that night. If you're a cocktail aficionado, then there's a mixologist on board. So they really try to customize the trip to who the guests are. And that's also something that we're seeing just with any of our guests where we're sending them around um, the world, they really want hyper-personalization. So we hyper-personalize everything we do because we take the opportunity to really get to know you, your family, your loved ones, and we know everything about you. And we'd give our partners a brief, but now we take that to the next level, that it's not just our partners, we actually will talk to the individual villas or the individual yachts or the individual places they're staying. Because we want it to be perfect for you. We want you to feel like you're going to your home away from home and that they're expecting you when you go on your arrival, if your drink of choice is a gin and tonic or if it's an iced tea, that it's there when you arrive and things like that. So the hyper-personalization aspect is really important. Right. Where else? I mean, we, we talked briefly earlier about Panama and Costa Rica becoming kind of hot again. Costa Rica's been popular for a, for a long time. Yes. Panama just beginning to be so, but not neither destination really having a ton of luxury luxury properties and, and yes. opportunities. Yes. You've seen that change? I have seen that change. And I loved our conversation earlier that you referenced that you wrote about Panama being up and coming in 20... 
10, I believe yeah. you said. Panama is an extraordinary country. Uh, they unfortunately haven't had the infrastructure and the resources to cater to a lot of you know, um, luxury guests, but now they have changed that. Uh, we work with a private island that has amazing villas, and again, everything that you would want and more, has all the activities in terms of, it's one of the best scuba diving places in the East Pacific, so if you're a diver, it's a great spot to get to that's very easy to go, and you can do great things there. And paired with Costa Rica, it's lovely, because you can do the zip lining, the hiking, you know, setting up the traps for the spider monkeys, and do all of that, and then truly just have a getaway on a beach and relax in Panama. It's a great combo, and we're seeing a lot of trend there too. You mentioned the zip wire, and I, if anyone wants to hear horror stories about zip wires and why I had an operation on my shoulder, <laughs> come and see me afterwards. Um, but are you seeing that kind of, that adventure travel come into, into the kind of luxury space? Because that seems to be a lot more of that in, in, a, in a different way to this than the wellness kind of stuff we talked about earlier. But that kind of really almost, what I used to call hairy chested travel, but, yeah. but in a luxury way. Yeah, <laughs> you can still call it hairy chested travel. Can I? Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's actually a great point, and it's interesting, as we all went through COVID, right, which we hate to even talk about, but we all slowed down because we had to, right? None of us knew how long it was going to last, none of us really took the time to appreciate it. It was scary, right? Then COVID ended-ish, and all of a sudden everyone's like, oh my God, let's travel, let's go everywhere we possibly can, just get me out. It's, we called it revenge travel, because they literally would call and be like, I don't care, get me on a plane next week, I just want to go. And that's where a lot of the adventures started to come, because people were like, I have not been able to run a marathon for two years. I have not been able to, you know, go on a triathlon for two years. So the adventure started to come back into the trips that we started to plan, and now we're seeing that trend just carry through, which is great. What about Japan? Because Japan is a perennially exciting destination. It's somewhere that everybody always wants to kind of tick off. Any, any trends in Japanese travel at the moment? Any new properties, any new destinations there that are exciting? Um, Japan is a great destination for us. And for those that have not been, um, if you have any interest, honestly, it's magical. There's so much to do there from a history, culinary, etc. Something that we like to do is take people a little bit off the beaten path and take you behind the scenes. Um, we had some guests that were there just a couple weeks ago and uh, we were able to get them to meet with the former prime minister in his home and they did calligraphy and sat with him and then helped, uh, had a proper tea ceremony and then had dinner with him. So we really try to do things a little bit different than what you see that's published. Again, a lot of that helps because we've been around for 35 years. So we have wonderful partners and friends on the ground that we consider part of our family and they are able to help us expose those opportunities and get us behind those closed doors. So let's talk a little bit about exactly you know, you alluded you've been around for 35 years. Um, Scott Dunn Private is, is a, a travel company with a very big difference, right? So tell us exactly what makes you, you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest differences with Scott Dunn Private is that you have a dedicated relationship manager, right? So think of us sort of as... Um, an extension of your family office, if we were the travel arm of your family office. So it's someone that knows everything about you, your travel style, your specific needs, where you've been, where you're dreaming about going, um, and that's your go-to person. But then what's unique about Scott Dunn is in-house, we have deep, deep teams of people with expertise in each destination. So one of the, my favorite thing is when I, when I started with the company was walking down our halls and it's like, there's the Asia team, there's the Africa team, <laughs> there's the Europe team. And these are big teams of people. So your private relationship manager, you know, is your go-to point person, but then they're working and collaborating with the, you know, various experts. So there's a ton of knowledge there, um, and that really makes a difference. One thing our guests love to do is sit down. We do travel mapping, right? So we'll sit down with you and talk to you about what you're thinking about doing or what we suggest you might want to be doing over the next year or two. Because as you know, you know, we talk about safaris. That's not something that you can plan, you know, for just a month, few months from now. Right. You need to be thinking about that ahead of time. Even just taking your kids for spring break or during festive season. We, so we don't want to be reactive. We want to be thinking about these things for you. When the clients kind of come to you uh, with an idea, do, do you find that they, they come with 20% a, a of an idea or to, and say, you know, we want to go to Australia what can you do for us? Or do they come with a more, you know, we want to go to Australia and we want to go to these five destinations and we want to do this and we want to do that. Presumably it's a, a bit of both and everything in between. But do you prefer the ones where they kind of say, just take me away somewhere? 
I think we like both, but and we do get both. But you know, we have clients, some clients that we know so well that they'll just say, "Where am I going next?" And that's, I mean, that's like a dream. That's like a blank canvas painting someone's dreams, right? <laughs> we love that. But even when someone comes to us with an inkling of an idea, or very much, you know, I want to go here, it, that's where the imagination and the creativity really comes into play of our team because we're taking it next level, and we might be adding in elements that they haven't thought of. You know, they might know where they want to go, but. I, I would say those are the layers that we're adding in that, that again, make the magic happen. Yeah. yeah. So at Rob Report, we, we have a kind of a mini mantra and, and what we base what we do around. And I call it the three A's. So we try and bring our readers access, authority, and allure. Make it sexy. Uh, because if you can tick all three of those boxes, then, you know, you've got a pretty compelling package. Now, with travel, access is it. It's the kind of the most important thing. And you've alluded to that a couple of times. You've talked about sprinkling the magic and, you know, creating some kind of wonderful moments. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and give us some examples of the, of the real wow factors that you've been able to do for people? Sure. Um, so, you know, a lot of people ask us this all the time. In fact, yesterday, I think I got asked this question a lot. But um, how do you make the impossible happen? Or what does that mean? So, look, I mean, I think if you have enough money, of course, we can make anything happen, right? We can close down a mountain if Madonna wants to ski, sure. <laughs> but it's not always about money. It's about unique access to and interesting experiences. So, I, I, Bridget, I think you mentioned it earlier. Look, we've been in business 35 years, so it's very careful nurturing of our like deep set of contacts that are unique to us. Everything from politicians, historians, curators, uh, people in private offices, that those are the people that help us turn the key and create access, right? Sometimes, again, it might be an experience that you wouldn't have even thought to ask us for. Um, in, in one case, I can think of an example, sending members to Paris. You know, they're huge art enthusiasts. So they got access to, um, you know, very discreet collector's home, and they were able to go to that person's home and learn more about how they curated and assembled their collection. Another one is, I know our team is very proud of this one. They got um, a member, a short audience with the Pope. I mean, that's, I would call that <laughs> access. But, um, yeah, so it's things like that. It's unique access, but, um, yeah, sometimes it's just flat out the super outlandish requests. And you can imagine. And you, you managed to invite the Mona Lisa to somebody's 40th birthday, right? <laughs> we did. <laughs> we did. Yes. What happened there? Yeah, it was a... Um, art history major and art history professor and his wife wanted to surprise her for her 40th birthday so requested us to close down the Louvre so they could have a champagne dinner in front of the Mona Lisa and we were able to do that which was really exceptional. Did she smile? <laughs> she winked. She was smiling until the protesters <laughs> threw soup, soup at her yeah, recently. Would, I don't know if you guys saw that news story. But, <laughs> but just building on that, uh, we've been laughing over the last few days about some of the outlandish requests, and we love our guests. Like, it's the best gift for us to work with such beautiful, kind, well-read, wonderful people. So you're here for the rest of the, the weekend, and, and if people want to come and uh, hear more and, and sign up and, and whatever else, they, they know where to find you, which is directly through there. Um, but guys, thank you so much for telling us about the wonderful world of, of Scott Dunn Private. I appreciate it very much. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks very much for having us. Thank you, everybody.